Hello students, Ms. Watson here, and welcome to the sixth episode on how to write high school lab reports. Today we're taking a look at how to write the observation section. So the first thing you need to know is the difference between an observation and an inference. Obviously, observations go in the observation section. Inferences, they do not go in observation sections of a lab report. So what is the difference between these two? Observations have to do with uh, how you sense things. So smell, touch, sight, taste, and sound. Obviously, in maybe a chemistry lab, you don't want to be tasting the chemicals. Uh, you don't want to touch them unless your teacher tells you to, and you want to use the proper technique for smelling them. But anything based on information from your five senses is an observation. An inference is an explanation or interpretation based on those observations. In an observation section, all we write is the stuff that we know based on our five senses. We do not make any sort of assumptions based on that information. So let's do a little activity to just cement that idea. Here I have a picture, or part of a picture. I want you to make three observations and one inference about this picture. So pause the video, write these down, three observations and one inference. All right, so here's the next part of the picture. Again, pause the video, write down three observations and one inference based on this new data. And then here we have the final piece. Again, pause the video, three observations and one inference. Write these down. So as you notice, as you went through this activity, your inference, what you think happened, probably changed. Your observations do not change. What you saw is always true. You maybe saw more information along the way, but the information, your observations from the very first piece didn't change once you saw the third piece. They were still there. However, your inferences, what you think is happening, probably did change as you went through. That's one of the reasons we don't include them in an observation section. Observation section is just for stuff that you know is happening. Now let's take a look at the difference between qualitative observations and quantitative observations. Qualitative observations are observations made only using those five senses. Quantitative observations also use some sort of tools, like rulers, scales, graduated cylinders, those types of things. Now where do we put our observations in the observation section? Well, there are two places, either in a chart or in paragraph form or point form, depending on um, what's more appropriate at that point. So charts, all quantitative data goes in a chart. It must go in a chart, it doesn't belong anywhere else. Also in our charts, we can put qualitative data that shows how the variables are being compared or how they're being measured. So sometimes the qualitative data is what we're primarily examining in our, uh, in our lab report, so that will also go in a chart. Paragraph form or point form will be any additional details that you notice. So it could be point form if they're small little things or if they're major catastrophes that happen during your lab report, you might want to write paragraphs about that. So these are just additional pieces of information. They're not the primary thing that you're looking for in the lab. Now, major point here, graphs are used to analyze information, therefore they go in the analysis section, not in the observation section. Observations have paragraphs and they have charts or data tables, but no graphs. So let's take a look at how we actually draw or how we actually make our uh, data tables. First thing, the independent variable goes in the first column. If you don't remember what the independent variable is, go back to the video on how to write titles. There, there's a good overview of the independent variable and dependent variable. So independent variable goes in the first column and you use a logical sequence in order to put your data. So instead of starting off at zero, I don't know, what is this temperature? So zero degrees, then going to 20, and then going down to five, and then going to 50, it doesn't really make sense. So you gotta put them in a logical order. Next thing, the dependent variables go in the columns to uh, the right of that. 
And if there's only one dependent variable, you would just have the one column. If there are multiple dependent variables, they each get their own column. Now you'll notice there are units in the column headings. So temperature, and then in brackets it says degrees Celsius. Uh, the height, in brackets it says centimeters. So instead of writing the units in each of the little blocks all the way down, you put it in the title, and then below that you just need to put numbers. Now let's take a look at the title. You need to, first of all, number the data table so that you can refer to it later in your analysis. You can just say data table number three. Um, and then you need a descriptive title. So what does that look like? This is just an example format, but something like the effect of, and then you'd write the independent variable, on, you write the dependent variable, under, and then you would have certain conditions. So in this example, the effect of temperature on the growth of spider plants over the course of eight months. And so that gives plenty of information about what's actually happening in that data table. All right, that's all for now for observations. See you later. Bye-bye.